So this is video part two for lessons 8-1 to 8-3. We left off right here in discussing our two approaches for solving percent problems. Remember, you can write a proportion, part over whole equals percent out of 100, or you can write an equation, but you must convert the decimal, the, sorry, the percent to a decimal if you write an equation. And then of means multiply, and is means equals. So let's try this. We're going to solve example two using both methods. I want you to make sure you write down both methods here so that you can have this to look back to, to study from. Like I said, I prefer the proportion, but the equation is a good option too, so I want to make sure you have both. 19 is what percent of 95? Well, remember with the proportion, we have two equal ratios. It's always percent out of 100 equals part over whole. 19 is what percent? Well, since it says what percent, that signifies that we don't know the percent, which means the percent in the proportion is going to be our variable. The percent is always over 100, so it's going to be x over 100. The other ratio, which could be written here or it could be written after, it doesn't matter the order, okay? of which fraction comes first, as long as the percent is over 100. The other ratio then must be the part over the whole, or the is over the of. So 19 is what percent of 95? The of signifies the whole, so 95 is the whole. It goes on the bottom. It must be on the bottom. And the part is the 19. That must go on top. Again, I could solve this proportion, or I could put this whole fraction before the 19 over 25, as long as 19 is over 20 is over 95 and x is over the 100. Okay. Now let's solve. Remember, we learned how to solve a proportion. When we have two equal fractions, we can cross multiply. So we have 95 times x is equal to 19 times 100. 100 is an easy number to multiply by. And then we divide by 95 to isolate our variable. With the proportion method, we would get 20. You must remember what you're solving for. We were asked to find the percent, so don't forget to put the percent symbol on your answer. You must write that in. Let's try the other way now with the equation. Remember with an equation is means equals and of means 95. So right below the is, is means equals, of means multiply. 19 is the percent, but we don't know the percent, so let's put a variable, times 95. Now, the only trick with this is, remember, when you solve for the percent, it's going to be in its decimal form. So a neater, a nicer algebraic way to write this would be 95 times x, and that's equal to 19. To solve, you would divide both sides by 95. Now, your work, you may be thinking, well, this looks different. Let's see how the answer comes out. 19 divided by 95 is equal to 0.2, or 2 tenths. Remember, that's not your answer. You're not done yet. You must take that decimal then and multiply it by 100 to get the percent. Moving it over twice, you would get 20%. So you can see, you get the same answer with the proportion and the equation method. I'm going to mo work mostly with the proportion method because I see that students have more success with it. Sometimes with the equation, we forget to do this last step. But you can use either. All right, let's try this next one. Gold, that is 24 carats, is 100% pure gold. So that means this 24 is the 100 the percent. It, this is like our whole then, because our whole matches up with the 100, and that's 100% gold. Gold, that is 14 carats, is 14 parts pure gold, and 10 parts another metal, such as copper, zinc, silver, silver or nickel. Gold is very valuable, but it actually is very, is very soft. It's a soft metal. So a lot of times, the jewelry that you have or the jewelry that you may see is 14 karat gold because they mix the other metals in to make it stronger. So what percent of 14 karat gold is pure gold? So 
This is kind of tricky because they don't really have the is and the of in there. But we know that we want to find the percent because it says what percent. So put that over 100. What percent of 14 karat gold is pure gold? Well, how much pure gold is in 14 karat gold? Find that in the problem. 14 karat gold is 14 parts pure gold. That means your part is 14. And if it was all gold, there would be 24 carats. So it's going to be over 24. Once you have your proportion set up, you can cross multiply. 24 times x is 24x. 14 times 100, again, that's just easy. We can add the two zeros right on. It's going to be 1,400. And then divide by 24. You use your calculator here. Find the answer for me. X is going to be, and then remember, we were asked to find what percent, so your answer must have a percent symbol on it. 1,400 divided by 24 is 58 and 3 tenths. 3 tenths repeat, well actually it's 3 repeating, so 58.3 repeating percent. Alright, let's try another type of problem. Again, we're going to still work with this proportion, but we might not know, we might know the percent now, we might not know something else. What number is 2.5% of 11,960? Set up your proportion. Remember, it's always percent out of 100, and it's is over of or part over whole. What number is, well now we know the percent, it's two and a half. What number is two and a half percent of the 11,960? The whole goes on the bottom, that's the of. Now we don't know the part, so that's what we're trying to find. Solve this proportion by cross multiplying. One hundred X equals twenty nine thousand nine hundred. And then when you divide by one hundred, remember dividing by one hundred is just really moving over the decimal, moving the decimal over twice. It's gonna get smaller this time. It'll be the same thing as canceling out those zeros. So X equals two hundred and ninety nine. There's no percent symbol in your answer here because we weren't solving for the percent. Let's try another one. PNC Park seats 38,496 people, and Heinz Field can hold about 169% of the Pirates fans. So, about how many fans can Heinz Field seat? Let's do the percent part first because we have it. It's 169%, and percent is always out of 100. Well, what does that 169% relate to, Heinz Field or PNC? Heinz Field can hold about 169%. So this top number is going to be your Heinz number. And the bottom number, 169% of the Pirates fans. The bottom number is your PNC. When you set up this fraction over here, make the order match. Do Heinz over PNC, Heinz over PNC. So PNC is the 38,000. That's going to go on the bottom to match up with the PNC on the other side. So we don't know the top here. Take a second to cross multiply and solve this. I want you to also try example six, then you can press play to go over it. All right, so I hope you've tried this and done the calculations on your own. Right here when we cross multiply, We get 6,505,824 equals 100x. When you divide by 100, that's the same thing as just moving this decimal over twice. You can type that in your calculator, but you should know that. So the answer here is going to be 65058.24, and it's asking me for about how many fans. So if you wanted to round that number, that would be fine. We can't really have part of a person, right? So it's about... 65,058 fans. Now, if you tried example six, the original sweater, the cost of the sweater is $40. The sweater goes on sale for 75% off of its original price. Later, the sweater goes on final sale, 
clearance for 50% off of its sale price. You may have done this a different way, but I want to show you one method. If you're taking a percent off, I often think about what percent am I keeping? So 75% off is really keeping 25%, right? So the sweater is now going to cost only 25% of what it did cost. So for me, I would set up the proportion being 25% out of 100. It's okay if you did this a different way. Let's see if you got the same answer, okay? So my $40 is my whole, and my partial cost would be what I would be paying after the 25%. When I solve this proportion, I end up getting x equals $10, which means on my sweater, or my sale, my sweater is $10. But now I'm going to take off 50%. If I'm keep taking off 50%, I like to think about what percent am I keeping. I'm keeping the other percent, which happens to be 50 as well, right? So now the $10 is my new whole, keeping 50% out of 100, and I'm finding the partial cost. Now you probably don't even need a proportion here. What's half of 10? It's 5. So what is your final sale price? It's $5, and how much money did you save? $35. Again, you may have done this a different way, but it helps to think about what percent are you keeping in your proportion if you want to find the end cost, okay? You could have done this with doing a proportion with 75%, but then you would be solving for how much you're taking off, and I wanted to know how much would be left. All right, there's one more part to this video, guys. Go ahead on to it.